articles and thoughts on vedanta by <coughs> shri sachidanandendra saraswati swami ji hore narsipur in this book we have already seen 23 articles and thoughts today is the 24th one omnipotence of brahman that is sarvajnatva hmm? brahmana sarvajnatvam brahma ka sarvajnatva ओम श्री गुरुभ्यो नम हरि ओम श्री गणेशाय नम ब्रह्म ईज ऑफन डिस्क्राइब एज द ओमनीशियंट एंड ओमनीपोटेंट लॉर्ड सर्वज्ञ सर्वशक्तिर ईश्वर हु इज दि काज ऑफ बर्थ सस्टिने एंड दि सोल्यूशन ऑफ दि वर्ल्ड सृष्टि स्थिति लय देर आर टू डाउट्स विद विच ए बिगिनर्स मैंड ईज बी सेट First of all, Brahman is according to Vedanta, the absolute without any specific features, and at the same time, it is said to be the cause of the universe. How is one to understand this paradoxical statement that one and the same entity is absolute as well as relative to the universe? Secondly, how can the absolute Brahman be Ishvara, the Lord, omniscient and omnipotent ruler, when there is nothing second to it to know or to rule over? This question has been raised and answered in the Sutra Bhashya as follows: "Kuta sthab Brahma atma vadina yekatva yekantyat yekatva aikantyat yishitri yishitavya abhave yishvara karana to pratijna virodha idhi chetna avidya atma ka namaro pavi jabja karana pe chatvat." ऑब्जेक्शन सिंस द यूनिटी ऑफ ब्रह्मात्मन इज एब्सल्यूट फॉर वन हु मेंटेन्स द डॉक्ट्रिन ऑफ ए चेंज इज ब्रह्मात्मन देर इज नेदर ए रूलर नॉट द रूल द प्रोपोजिशन दैट ईश्वर आर द रूलर इज द कॉज ऑफ द यूनिवर्स बिकम्स सेल्फ कॉन्ट्रडिक्टरी रिप्लाई नो फॉर द ओमनीशियंस ऑफ ब्रह्मन इज ओनली रिलेटिव टू द डिफरेंशिएशन ऑफ नेम एंड फॉर्म विच आर द फिगमेंट ऑफ इग्नोरेंस अविद्यात्मक दैट इज फिगमेंट ऑफ इग्नरेंस वी हेव ऑलरेडी सीन दैट इज अद्वैत इन होल्ड्स दैट ब्रह्मन इज एसेंशियली कॉन्शियसनेस इट्स सेल्फ एंड इट इज सेट टू बी ओमनीशियंट ओनली इन ए सेकेंडरी सेंस बिकॉज इट्स नेचर इज कॉन्शियसनेस दैट कैन थ्रो लाइट ऑन ऑल ऑब्जेक्ट्स एंड दैट दैर इज नथिंग इन ऑर्डनरी लाइफ सप्टल intercepted and distinct from brahman which is not within the range of that consciousness we have now to see in that sense in what sense it is a ruler and how it is omnipotent shankara offers the following explanation of the foregoing brief citation sarvajnasya ishwarasya atmabhute eva avidya kalpite nama rupe tattva anyatva bhyam nirvajaniye samsara prapancha bija bhute sarvajnasya ishwarasya maya shakti प्रकृति इति प्रकृति चुतिस्मृत्यो अभिलभ्यान्यवज्ञ ईश्वर स च स्वात्मूता घटाकाशस्थानीयान्द्या प्रत्युपस्थापित नामकृत कार्यकसंघाताधिनोधि जीवाख्यान्ज्ञात्म प्रतीष्टे प्रतीष्टे व्यवहार विषय तदेव अविद्यात्मकोपाधिपरीदापेक्षम ईश्वर से ईश्वर सर्वज्ञशक्ति न परमाथ विद्यपास्तोपाधिस्वे आत्मनि ईशित्रीशितव्य सर्वज्ञत्वादिव्यवहार उपपद्यते नेम एंड फॉर्म कंजूर्ड बै अविद्या ने सेन्स As if they were identical with the omniscient Ishwara, the Lord, which are undefinable as either Himself or other than Him, and which are the that is anirvachaniya, are the seed of the phenomenal world of practical life, are in Shruti and Smriti spoken of as the Maya, deluding appearance, Shakti, potency, and Prakriti, nature of the omniscient Ishwara. Ishwara is quite distinct from these two. <coughs> and 
this ishvara as associated with the conditioning maya rules over the vijnanatmans knowing souls called jivas who are actually his very self only in the sphere of practical life so then it is only related to the limitation of ignorance that ishvara is called ishvara ruler omniscient and omnipotent while there is no room for such usage of terms as the relation of the ruler and the ruled omniscience etc in the case of atman in the transcendental state who is of the turiya who is of the nature of divested of all conditioning associates at the dawn of vidya this is only half the story for we are yet to learn how the impartible brahman can be the material cause of all this universe upadana karana how is this truth to be reconciled to fact when it says reality becomes both the empirical real and unreal taitri upanishad tat tat chat uh, sat chat cha bhavat hmm shankar himself writes itascha pragatir brahma yat karanam brahmana eva vikaratmana parinamaha samadhikaranyena amna yate for this reason also brahman is the material cause for the evolution of brahman into the effect has been revealed in the shruti by treating both brahman and the universe as one and the same in the taittiriya which says brahman became all this shankara gets over this difficulty elsewhere by drawing our attention to the truth at the transcendental level naisha dosha avidya kalpita roopa bheda bhupadamat nahi avidya kalpitena roopa bhedena savayavam vastu sampadyate nahi tibiropahat nayanena ಅನೇಕ ಇವ ಚಂದ್ರಮಾ ದೃಶ್ಯಮಾನು ಅನೇಕ ಇವ ಭವತಿ ಅವಿದ್ಯಾ ಕಲ್ಪಿತೇನ ಚ ನಾಮರೂಪಲಕ್ಷಣೇನ ರೂಪಭೇದೇನ ವ್ಯಾಕೃತ ವ್ಯಾಕೃತಾತ್ಮಕೇನ ತತ್ವಾನ್ಯತ್ವಾಭ್ಯಾಮಿವಚನೀಯನ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಪರಿಣಾಮಿ ಸರ್ವ್ಯವಹಾರಾಸ್ಪದತ್ವ ಪ್ರತಿಪದ್ಯತೆ ಪರಮಾರ್ಥಿಕೆ ಪಾರಮಾರ್ಥಿಕೇನ ಚೇಣ ಸರ್ವ್ಯವಹಾರಾತೀತ ಅಪರಿಣತ ಅವತಿಷ್ಠತೆ ವಾಚಾರಂಭಣಮಾತ್ರಾಚ ಅವಿದ್ಯಾ ಕಲ್ಪಿತ ರೂಪಭೇದಸ್ಯ ಇತಿ ನ ನಿರವಯವತ್ವ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಣ ಕುಪ್ಯತಿ ದಿಸ್ ಈಸ್ ನೋ ಡಿಫೆಕ್ಟ್ ಇನ್ ವೇದಾಂತ ಫಾರ್ ಎ ಸ್ಪೆಷಲ್ ಆಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮನ್ ಕಂಜ್ಯೂಡ್ ಬೈ ಇನಿ ಸೆನ್ಸ್ ಈಸ್ ಅಡ್ಮಿಟೆಡ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಟು ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲೇನ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ವೆಲ್ ನೋನ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಎ ಥಿಂಗ್ ಡಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಬಿಕಮ್ ರಿಯಲಿ ಪಾರ್ಟಿಬಲ್ ಮಿಯರ್ಲಿ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಎ ಸ್ಪೀಚಿಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಆಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟ್ ಕಂಜ್ಯೂಡ್ ಬೈ ದಿ ಇಗ್ನೋರೆನ್ಸ್ ಶೂರ್ಲಿ ದ ಮೂನ್ ಡಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಬಿಕಮ್ ಮೆನಿ ಮಿಯರ್ಲಿ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಅಪಿಯರಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಮೆನಿ ಟು ಒನ್ ಹೂ ಈಸ್ ಸಫರಿಂಗ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಕ್ಯಾಟ್ರಾಕ್ಟ್ brahman is spoken of as being subject to evolution and as something uh, uh, subject to such other empirical notions only in its special aspect of differentiated and undifferentiated names and forms undefinable as itself or other than it this aspect itself being conjured up by any sense whereas in its own really real aspect it is uh, beyond all such language and continues to be without any evolution the so called special aspect conjured up by ignorance being merely a play of words vacharambhanam sab vacharambhanam matram the impartiality of brahman is quite unaffected so that is called omnipotence of brahma that's the 24th uh, chapter <coughs> next 25th chapter the highest aim of human life what is that hmm jeevana da hegguri manava janma da hegguri what is the highest aim of human life the ancient philosophers of india have enumerated the objects of human life as four to wit that is chaturvarga or chaturvida purushartha dharma merit arising out of the performance of religious duties artha wealth kama enjoyment or pleasure and moksha final release from the bondage of mundane life the first three are sometimes bracketed within the name of trivarga the triad in order to imply their uh, ephemeral and unreal nature in contrast with the last which is considered to be the eternal and hence it is entitled parama purushartha the highest goal of man all schools regard release as eternal while they widely differ about the means which help the seeker in achieving it karma merit earned through the performance of religious duty upasana meditation upon reality and sometimes a combination of both have been proposed as conducive to this highest goal discrimination between purusha the indifferent self and prakriti primordial matter has been recommended by the sankhyas viveka sadasad viveka purusha prakriti viveka discrimination hmm? 
by the sankhyas as the sole means of release since they believe that non discrimination abiveka as the only bondage from which man is suffering there are a number of purushas according to this school sankhya school and so they think that each one of them has to free himself from bondage by means of this discrimination the yogins are the followers of patanjali who have been sometimes called seshwara sankhyas sankhyas who believe in the existence of god insist upon the constant practice of yoga or psychic practice for the dissociation of purusha from the entanglement in the various forms of prakriti the ultimate freedom for them is possible only when the seeker attains the samadhi super conscious state of the mind the contemporary and uh, pre shankara vedantins referred to in shankara's sutra bhashya informally believed in release as freedom from the duality of the individual self and the supreme self called brahman and recommended various means for the attainment of union of the individual self with the brahman the one distinctive feature of shankara's tradition of interpretation of the upanishads lies in its holding to the axiomatic principle that nothing eternal can be produced by any artificial means whatever the upanishads emphatically proclaim nasti agradah kritena nothing an unartificial can be accomplished through doing something therefore according to this school of shankara the only means it if means it were would be to realize this eternal freedom of one's self by dispelling the ignorance which makes one fondly believe that one is actually bound shankara therefore remarks yasya tu utpadyo mokshah tasya manasam vachikam kayakam va karyam avekshata iti yuktam tatha vikadyatve cha tayoh pakshayo mokshasya dhruvam anityatvam For one who thinks that freedom has got to be produced, it is right that the goal depends on some mental, verbal, or bodily effort to be made. And so would it be for one who thinks release is the result of transforming the present state, and freedom is sure to be transient in both these cases. There are two more effects that can be expe- expected to result from the operations operation of some means, which the effect may be. something to be reached or to be produced by some purifactory processes purificatory processes neither of these alternatives is possible in the case of brahma bhava becoming brahman for as shankara adds brahman is all pervading and hence it is not is not something to be reached and brahman does not admit of any purification by making it more perfect or removing any defect in it since it is absolutely perfect and is altogether devoid of any taint For these reasons Shankara concludes our nature as Brahman is not something to be achieved afresh everyone is eternally free as Brahman and this has to be realized only by removing the natural ignorance that one is limited by the body and the senses that is why the shrutis say that one who knows Brahman attains the highest brahma vid brahma eva bhavati so this is the 25th chapter next 26th chapter we shall see in the next session the one means of attaining atman sarve jana sukhino bhavantu lokas kas samasta sukhino bhavantu adi shankara bhavat pada pujya charana arvinda arpita mastu shri 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 sachidanand indra sudhi charana arvinda arpita mastu sadguru charana arvinda arpita mastu om tat sat